Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. We have Rancor starting the upper right hand corner as the red Zerg. Bottom right hand corner, we have Grast starting as the blue Protoss. This is a best of five, but game one, very much going in Rancor's favor, by the way. Should, full announcement, Chubba League season 12 semifinal between Rancor and Grast. Game one, going to Grast in a convincing fashion. This is Tau Cross. And I think Grast had... That's kind of a clever, sneaky build that punishes Zerg that aren't doing their due diligence and scouting all the way. They're just making assumptions based off that first gateway. And also that follow... Uh, initially, I thought Grasp was losing control because of the pylon blockade of his own natural expansion, things like that. But he really turned around and threw some... And also with Rancor, with the nice Zergling micro right off the bat to kill those three Zealots with just eight Zerglings, which I thought was fantastic. So I was like, oh man, this is going to look ugly for Grasp. But the turnaround was just fantastic. And I'm not sure that bodes well for Rancor overall. It looks like he is going to start scouting that uh, third base. Grass going ahead and placing a pylon in his natural. Now this is a rampless map, which makes Zerglings more aggressive and Zealots more aggressive. Twofold. Talcross reminds me... So in the uh, PVZ aspect, it's one of those things where I feel like Pro, uh, Zerg has a lot of advantages early. Drops can be a big thing, particularly Lurker drops on this map. We are seeing an overpool, by the way. <clears throat> and uh, I think that was an uh, on nine additional Zerglings being produced. We are seeing a Forge first, this time for Grass, so he is going to go for more of an economic build. Got a little bit of something in my throat. <clears> throat> there we go. Uh, and so... I feel like the early advantage, oftentimes it's a brief moment of mid-game advantage, depending on drops and things like that. And it looks like the probe scout going to move out and catch that base. They're actually turning around briefly. It was maybe on attack move. Can go to Zerg players. But I feel like once Psy Storm is up and in sufficient numbers because of a lot of the ramp positionings and because you basically have little bundles of units that end up kind of on these map features here, it's just Psy Storm all day. So Psy Storm very, very strong on this map. Looks like we are going to see a cannon first. But only four Zerglings? Just two Zerglings being produced initially here by Grast. Rancor respecting the eggs that are hatching there, though. And actually maybe going to do something sneaky. He's got a probe in the back corner. Pocketing it, it is possible he'll plant a pylon here. Maybe he's waiting to see how many Zerglings pass by. and making. Oh, nope, he is going to go ahead and do that pylon. Nope, canceling it. So for a moment he was thinking about it. But then deciding against going for that interior pylon blockade, he does have his Nexus now producing. The Zerglings moving forward. That, so that's 33 resources. You can see Rancor trying to hunt around for that probe. And Grass doing a good job pocketing it to go ahead and try to find an opportunity to sneak it to get additional scouting information. Drone pulling out. The Zerglings are there as well. Are we going to see an interior three hatch again? It looks like we are going to see an interior three hatch. I like Rancor's positioning of this hatchery to go ahead and produce a degree of a SimCity on the front door. He does have three drones on gas, and he's got that Hydra stand. So it looks like it's going to be three hatch Hydra to follow this up. And so this is... this. Seeing what Rancor has done previously, he's gone with that early Hydra pressure off the three hatch Hydra and more or less try to box his opponent in, take down a lot of cannons. If he has an opportunity to win the match outright, he wins the match outright with that pressure. The thing with doing that, though, particularly when you haven't taken... The thing with the 973 and taking an additional expansion is sometimes you can economically recover a Zerg, or you don't have to dedicate all of the Hydralisks. When you do it off just the pure three hatch without taking additional expansions or that drone saturation behind it, it becomes a lot more of an economic commitment with... That early contain looks like that probe trying to sneak through is able to do so across three drones and this is also mining time that's going to be delayed and grass seen that hydralis den so he knows potentially that in a minute or so and he actually if he can keep this probe scout alive looks like he's got it i wonder if there's a way to like hide that bar i'll need to look up hotkeys again uh, to do so i think control u hides this one yeah so i should do that more often to be honest uh but if he can keep this probe alive and see the amount of hydralisks that are being produced, he'll have a good idea of when he needs to place additional photon cannons down. Right now, he's already putting one down preventatively. He's got level one weapons. This is actually a curiosity to me for a lot of Protoss players. This feels honestly optimistic. When you see the hydralisk end down and you see three hatcheries, you got to know that your opponent's going to come at you, right? Uh, with 
with Hydralisk. So it feels like very optimistic to go ahead and upgrade weapons one instead of grabbing a second forge preemptively and plopping something down the background. He's grabbing a cannon. Overlord getting a little bit too close, taking a bit of damage. We do have the Citadel of Adun in the background, Pylon. The other big advantage for Grass with that scouting information is he knows he can skip the Stargate. He knows he doesn't have to dedicate anything to the air. Rancor playing, so rather than dedicating a lot of Hydralisks here, he is opting to be a little bit more economically aggressive. He's filled out a lot of drones. And so this has been grasped because he dedicated these cannons expecting a Hydra bust and the Hydra is really not being produced. That's going to allow Rancor to get a bit of an economic edge here in the mid game. And he's just pumping drones. That's seven more drones that he's filling out here in the interim. Although Grast does have that assimilator down. He is mining the double gas and he is getting that Templar archives. And again, if he can get those early high Templar out, if he can get that early side storm, I think it will put, that will be a huge advantage. He's got an additional, looks like a, is the Zealot been roaming around? Zealot was like camping near that 12 o'clock location to go ahead and deny that base. He's got Zealot leg speed coming online momentarily, planting additional cannons, again, expecting a Hydralisk bus that just isn't coming. This is only two Hydralisks here and two Zerglings. And this one Zealot actually, if there's not enough micro, yeah, going out and, and distracting it, that actually might, with this, might actually be enough to... So ignore what I said earlier. Might be enough to go ahead and get that level 1 weapons up. This Hydralis now needs to be careful now that his brethren has fallen to the cannon line. Uh, drone is pocketed here at that 3 o'clock location to potentially take that. Now we're seeing some Hydralisks from Rancor to go ahead, or going ahead and pressing towards that natural expansion, forcing some additional cannons from Grass. So that's going to slow his economy down a bit. But Grass grabbing additional gateways. He's very, very comfortable. Is this probe scout? That probe taking some damage, but able to get his way home. This is going to be close, actually. We'll see if there's a cancellation. So Forge still on the way. And is there a cancel before it is? No cancel on the weapons. So it looks like minerals lost. Uh, for grass. So gateway going to go down, but keep in mind this is just a, a handful of Hydralisks, and honestly if there had been more Zealot production here in the meantime, instead of cannons, these Hydralisks might not have even been able to do this, but there are sufficient numbers to go ahead and press this back. Rancor grabbing that 3 clock base with the little bit of map control he has with those Hydralisks on the front door. We do see Phenomenized Carapace being upgraded, knowing that there is potentially a Templar Archives, but keep in mind Rancor is also playing in the dark here. Now this is what I wanted to see. Early Side Storm, and I want to see yeah, a lot of those High Templar early. Because again, as soon as High Templar is out and in sufficient numbers, it can just be a huge advantage for Protoss on Talcross. And I'd love to see that from Grast. Looks like we do have double evolution chamber once again. So Rancor wants to play the weapons upgrade game from here. I'm not sure that's going to be a big, a big, uh, what's the word, a big advantage on Tau Cross in particular, again, because of all that size storm. Some Zealots doing some damage here at the 3 o'clock base. Two hatcheries plopping down right there. The Zealot's actually trying to run by to get a look at the tech. And this Zealot is actually going to be able to suicide in, not quite making it to go ahead and, and see what stage of tech that Rancor is out. And I think Grast feeling a little bit, maybe not discombobulated, but I'm not sure that he realized, I think he was looking for a big Hydra bust and it's not coming here at this stage. But he's got a whole bunch of High Templar out now. Looks like he has set up a robotics facility potentially to get a shuttle out to maybe even do some shuttle drops at the 3 o'clock location, maybe do it. You can even kind of drop on the high ground or back this corner. Point being, there's a lot of places to do side storm drops as well. Rancor has those roaming Hydralisks. I'm wondering if he's going to go ahead and grab an additional base behind this. And he's continuing to pump those weapons upgrades. Additional gateways plopping down. We are, we are seeing some Dark Templar. I don't know that those are going to be very effective again. And also, Rancor has dropped his Double Forge here in the background. I think upon scouting... That evolution chamber on the front, he realized what Rancor was up to with that early weapon upgrades, or maybe he scouted and knew Rancor's playstyle, knew that he likes playing uh, more the the weapons upgrade heavy thing in the mid game, and so perhaps to opting to to play that direction uh, comparatively. But he is going to be able to. He'll be a little bit delayed because Rancor's level one weapon, level one missile attack, level one carapace is coming online right about now. So it's a be. It'll be a little bit behind, but he will be able within a few minutes to more or less match that. And he's got all sorts of gateways down to in a minute be able to produce all sorts of units. Grass moving out a little bit early, in my opinion, does have some size storm. Now here's the thing: if he can push this roving army back across that bridge and just keep an eye on this army. And have side storms waiting. Grast will be able to basically cap an additional two, sometimes three bases, just from that. 
Also, these Dark Templar out in the field, I don't see any Overlord with this Hydralisk Force. Speed is upgraded. And Grast is moving out. He's going to go ahead and stage an initial pile on there. A High Templar getting picked off. Another Psy Storm on the ground. And two High Templar rapidly picked off by Rancor. That is absolutely huge. Did I miss a drop in the meantime? No, it looks like he's just got that Observatory. It's possible I did. I don't think so, though. Re-engaging the Overlord, not in position, delaying, and that's going to allow these Dark Templar to reign free and get a lot of damage. These Hydralis eating a lot of Zealot attack in this midfield, and so now Rancor's army that was looking to be a threat is greatly reduced. Queen's Nest is up. Hive is on the way. We also have a Spire in play, so we could see a potential tech switch. And I'd love to see that from Rancor. That's one big threat in general that Zerg, I think, oftentimes don't deploy here. There's no cannons protecting this front door. Grast is grabbing this third base. He has basically no anti-air here in the midfield, so in the mid-game. So if he is able to get a grouping of Mutalisks out, won't just be able to pick off High Templar, but potentially could wreak a lot of havoc at the natural expansion and the main. Grast now moving out to go ahead and seize this third base in the left-hand corner of the map. Both players playing a bit passively. I got to give Grass the economic advantage, the tech advantage here currently. The one thing that is working in Rancor's favor is he's got level one weapons, level one carapace, and he's continuing to pump those upgrades. Does he have three evolution chamber down? I think he might have three. Ev yeah, three, ev three evos now. Still no lurkers out on the field though, and there's a lot of Psy Storm, Dark Templar, Dragoons starting to fill things out just in case there were lurkers. High Templar need to be careful. A little bit of a whiff of a Psy Storm. The Psy Storms need to count to pull this match. Great Psy Storm right there, catching a lot of Hydralisks, really leaving them soft. And a couple Zerglings moving in from that right-hand corner. Rancor playing a little bit passively, backing off. I think he could straight up engage. Ooh, baiting a lot of that army into a Psy Storm down below and really thinning out the herd. Grass with a huge supply lead, by the way. Needs to be a little bit careful controlling his Zealots. High Templar still with a decent amount of energy. Hydralisk running down to go ahead and try to get a kill. Not quite able to get an additional High Templar kill. But now Grass has three bases versus his opponent who also has three bases. He's continuing to pump weapons upgrade. Has a level one shield, level one armor online to equalize things a little bit. But level two missile attack and level two carapace are on the way. And critically, Hive Tech is up. And Adrenal Glands is right around the corner. And Zerglings are just so scary late game. Granted, Grast is 40 supply ahead. But once Zerglings have that Adrenal upgrade, particularly when you can get Swarm and other things, it doesn't matter. They just do so much damage so rapidly. So much damage so rapidly. Rancor looking to sweep around, maybe attack this base. There are three cannons there. I think Grass should be able to defend it, but Grass looking to crash down at this inside three o'clock base. There are Hydralisks and Zerglings there. Adrenal Upgrade has finished, and that is going to make these Dragoons just absolutely melt. And the Zealots are going to have a hard time as well, particularly with the upgrade deficiency. Some beautiful side storms from Grass, though, obliterating the Hydralisks. They're trying to engage from behind, but another army crashing from the left. They're blanketed in a lot of side storm. So it looks like both players basically exchanging armies. Archon's trying to morph. And the Hydralisks actually might be able to clean up what's left on the field. The Dragoon's pressing into what's left, but the Zerglings going to sweep down and make short work of what's left. And I believe this is going to give an advantage to Rancor overall because he's starting to move into that late game tech. He's also, in the background, building a handful of Mutalisks. One o'clock base is going up for Rancor. He does, and it looks like he has a couple Scourge just in case a shuttle was going to be out here. But Rancor, a little bit light on drones. Actually getting a greater Spire. Interesting. We'll see if that ends up being a factor. You'll have that option for tech. Zerglings getting on top of those Dragoons. You can see how quickly they melt. And you can see Rancor just relying on a lot of Zerglings in the mid-game. And he can do so. They're so cheap, so efficient so deadly in this stage of the match. Grast has a probe at that 9 o'clock location, wants to go ahead and try to grab that base. 
So Rancor, I think he has all the tools in his toolbox to, to finish things out. Grast, he had a lot of size storm. I feel like he had a moment where he might be able to push things and slow Rancor's economy down or at least get some positional advantage, get overwhelming attack force. We'll see if, if he can capitalize on it though. Rancor pressing down from the right. The Zealots surrounding a lot of this army. Sidestorm's whiffing. It looks like another High Templar getting picked off. Rancor backing off some Mutalisks engaging that 9 o'clock base. I think these Mutalisks were mostly around to go ahead and pick off some exposed High Templar. But they're going to sneak back and these are going to become Guardians in a minute to go ahead and do a back attack. Back attack! Across this bottom left hand base. Rancor has established this mineral only. At the 12 o'clock base's mineral look, line looking somewhat thin. So it's basically four base, effectively versus four base. Theoretically, but Ingrast has a huge supply lead. But again, I think that supply lead is a bit deceptive just because of the weapons upgrade and Zerglings with that adrenal upgrade, etc. Guardians morphing in that bottom left hand corner. A Zealot moving up should be able to kill that. Well, it's on patrol moves. Zerglings flooding in. It looks like they're going to deny that grass fourth base. And look how quickly they take everything down. Before able to... Ooh, some nice Psystrums to save that Nexus. Did they save the Nexus? I'm not even sure. And the Guardians, while well, all of that distraction is happening, going to go ahead and press in and kill a lot of probes and clear out that location. No Stargate. So that's going to have to be cleared out with Dragoons and Psystrum alone, but Grast deciding to get aggressive. He's like, okay, wasn't able to take my fourth base. Let me go ahead and try potentially to take an additional base myself. Oof, that getting absolutely obliterated. Some Zerglings and Hydralisks are there to greet it, but Rancor is going to need a, a more sizable army than this to stop Grast. And it looks like he might end up getting supply capped in the interim. So pushing up, engaging, did lose an Overlord. Some more Zerglings and Hydralis engaging. Great Psystorm from Grass. This is what I was talking about with the bundling that happens near these bridge points. We do see a shuttle out here ferrying some units rather than going for any sort of drop. And able to wipe out that army. In the meantime, the, the Guardians splitting up. And it looks like doing all sorts of damage to this bottom left-hand corner. But for Rancor to cap this match, he needs to survive. And Grast has a big army moving into this 3 o'clock base. There is... A Sutton Colony right there. So Rancor, if he can survive, he will win this match. But that's the big question mark. Will he survive? Looks like there was a drop. Two Zealots, High Templar as well at that natural expansion. So both players inflicting immense amounts of damage on one another. Is this going to get cleaned up? It looks like just some High Templar and that getting cleaned up in that bottom corner. That Greater Spire being worked on. The Guardians are still pounding away at everything else and actually working on that Nexus. In that bottom left corner. Things all over the map. The High Templar getting cleaned up. It looks like Rancor did, did in fact defend. Some more High Templar being dropped at that natural expansion. Catching a handful of drones. And the Guardians are still standing. Wailing on everything here in this bottom left hand corner. More Zerglings flooding this direction to go ahead and clean up what's left. Grast is no longer mining. His natural expansion is empty. His, his main is empty. This base is under assault. So he is basically out of resources. He still has High Templar and Zealots. Doing damage to Rancor's base, but Rancor's mining at the 1 o'clock location. Upper right hand base is thin, but still mining. 3 o'clock base is still mining and standing. So despite being bloodied and bruised, it looks like Rancor is still in this match. And might take it out that Nexus just with a flick of health. Guardians being cleaned up. The Zerglings pounding away, taking that Nexus. More Storm Drops at that 3 o'clock location. And... Grass doing a good job of just obliterating. <laughs> so both players obliterating, just devastating each other's economy. So no Nexus here, no Nexus here. Still a lot of probes. They're going to have to distance mine because Grass is at 30 supply right now. So it is just armies on the ground at the moment. Rancor has an opportunity to lick his wounds and resupply. It looks like he's going to go ahead and grab another expansion here just outside Grass main, distance mining, some Archons on the defense, a couple Zerglings floating around. And Rancor just making sure, I think he's floating a couple units, just to make sure that there aren't additional bases that were snuck out by Grass, and also potentially to go ahead and grab some something additional himself. 
But if Rancor just goes ahead and drones up and gets another army on the ground, he should be able to finish this out. This is all the army Grast has at the moment. And that's for both offense and defense. Rancor pushing in, engaging. No Overlord overhead. Beautiful Psystrums once again. Psystrums have really been on point this match. And that Dark Templar getting all sorts of damage done. Forcing Rancor to, to retreat. Still waiting on 400 resources to go ahead and get that base up. Grass starting to press into that 3 o'clock base. That might be a suicide mission. And he needs to keep these units alive. Right now he's trying to allow his aggression to be his defense as well. Rancor now moving up with Zerglings. There is a High Templar. It doesn't have enough for Psystorm. And it is pocketed in the middle. And these Dragoons are not going to last long against these highly upgraded Zerglings. Trying to stutter step and buy themselves some time. But there's GG from Grass. GG well played. What a match in game two. Both players have a game apiece. Hope you guys enjoyed it. It's going to be an exciting finals, guys. Thanks for listening.